Hello, I'm Superintendent Jerry Hill, and I'm here with Joey Spano, Director of Community Education. We're joined today by the Supervisor of Enrichment and Recreation, Sally Unrath, and Tom DeGrand, one of our teachers in the district and also the lead teacher of our day camps in the summer. The West Bloomfield School District is fortunate to have one of the best and most comprehensive community education departments in the state, and that is validated by the number of awards they have received from the Oakland County Community and Adult Educators and also from the Michigan Association of Community and Adult Education for their outstanding programs and services. I suspect that many people aren't aware of all of the components there are to community education. Joey, could you tell us what services that you, pro you provide and your colleagues provide to our community? Yes, Dr. Hill, uh, very proud of what the services we do provide. We offer programs on a year-round basis for all ages, uh, starting with our early childhood and school age child care programs, our after school programs and Saturday activities. Uh, enrichment and recreation, uh, adult education in English as a second language, aquatics, uh, facility rentals, our academic summer school for high school students, and also our great summer camp program that we're going to hear about today. Great. So the school year has ended, and it's uh, great to know that we have summer fun and learning available to us throughout the summer camps. I know that we have several community partners that are contributing to in different ways to our programs. Uh, Joey, who are some of those partners that we work with in the community? We have worked very hard to forge some strong community partnerships, uh, starting with West Bloomfield uh, Public Library, it's been with us many years, uh, PNC Bank Foundation, uh, Oakland County Parks, uh, and uh, Whole Foods West Bloomfield, uh, to name a few, and they've been with us for several years. We're very grateful for their support. A very supportive community, it sounds like. Very supportive. Uh, Sally, you've been director of summer camps for several years now. What sets our camps apart from other districts or organizations? There's actually three different things that set us apart. Our first one is our staff. All of our camps, our instructors are either professionals, come from reputable companies, or are certified teachers or college students with an education degree. I visited several of these camps and witnessed the enthusiasm and fun that the kids are experiencing. Other than the summer day camps, you have a lot of specialties and sports camps also. Would you mind describing those for us? Sure. Um, we actually take pride in ourselves on the variety of camps and how we are on the cutting edge of what's trending. This year, young actors and actresses can take a bow in musical theater and performing arts camp, and youngsters can take flight in mad science. For those that want to go game crazy, we have Lego Robotics, Minecraft, and video game design. We also have uh, kids that can be empowered through Creative Girls, Let It Go, Superheroes, Boys University, and Bully Proof Me, which are all brought to us by Kids Empowered. We also have little girls that become princesses in our Pretty in Pink Princess Camp. And we also knew this year we have Girls Just Want to Have Fun and Boys Will Be Boys, which combine efforts to in sessions on social etiquette, fitness, and self-esteem. We have an international cooking and culture our camp this summer, and also new for preschoolers, we have Music Wise, Sounds of the Sea, and Preschool Science Discovery, which are camps that are specifically for three and four-year-olds um, with a former music teacher, preschool music teacher, that will be doing the Sounds of the Sea, and then the three-day uh, preschool discovery camp takes preschoolers and exposes them to different forms of science as far as bugs, butterflies, and dirt. <laughs> and then we're very excited this year to launch our summer strings and percussion camp. And this is a camp where students can learn to play the violin or the drums or just brush up on their techniques if they're already playing those instruments. <laughs> Sally, what about sports? Do you offer sports in the summer? There aren't many sports that we don't cover. We have camps that incorporate golf, tennis, soccer, and track and field. And we also have a former professional basketball player, Greg Kelser, who does his annual basketball camp. And then we also have baseball, volleyball, lacrosse, and basketball camps that are run by our uh, high school coaches and administrators. One of our more popular camps and very well attended is Pat Watson's basketball camp. I had an opportunity the other day to drop in and I shot a few hoops uh, with Mr. Watson. I spoke with him about uh, that camp you refer to. 
Hi, we're here today with Principal Pat Watson at a basketball camp, and I'm going to ask Pat a few questions about camp. Uh, Mr. Watson, uh, tell us about what's going on here today. Well, this week we're fortunate enough to offer a basketball camp. So we have about 60 campers that are here that range from age 7 to age 14. Some are from West Bloomfield and some are from surrounding districts. And, and what's your philosophy on basketball camps for the young people? Well, we're really trying to make it educational athletics. So it provides them opportunity not just to play basketball, but we also have a curriculum that we covered that really encourages the stu um, students to be good citizens, be good sports, and really enjoy you know, educational athletics. And what is the length of the camp for the students? Uh, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for a full week. Mm -hmm. and, and I see both boys and girls at this camp. Talk about that. It's really exciting. The girls are starting to get more into basketball like they were in the community about a decade ago. We have some really strong teams. So it's great to see all the young ladies out this year. And are there any potential future Lakers in this group of young students? We've got several future Lakers in this group. So we're really excited about what the opportunity is for them and what the future holds for us and our basketball program here at the high school. And if you had to offer one piece of advice for one of these young basketball pl players, what would it be? Study, study, study. There's more financial aid and scholarships and academics than there is in athletics. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Thank you. I know that all of the camps are held at West Bloomfield High School, which allows opportunities for you to utilize all the great facilities that we have at that school, including fields and the swimming pool and the gymnasium, the auditorium, the classrooms. Do the kids ever get a chance, Joey, to go off-site during the summer? Actually, they do, Dr. Hill. Uh, we have, uh, we've been very extremely fortunate to have received a grant, again this year, very generous grant from PNC Bank Foundation. And that has allowed us to offer um, scholarships uh, to our families and also to expand our field trips. And this year, I believe this summer, we're going to uh, Detroit Institute of Arts, the Detroit Zoo, uh, Waterford Oaks uh, Water Park, and um, I think they're going bowling too. So. That has just given us an opportunity to really expand our offerings and get the kids off site too to just instill a little bit of different venues and excitement into the day. We have a great uh, pool facility at West Bloomfield High School and the, the kids seem to love the pool. What kind, uh, Sally, what kind of swimming classes do you, you offer for the students in the summer? In addition to our day campers swimming every afternoon in the pool, we have an extensive aquatic program that is run by uh, high school swimming coach Bob Crosby. We have a youth competitive swim uh, team, which is made up of about 50 swimmers ages 5 to 18. And then we have our Learn to Swim program for ages uh, infant through um, adult. And then we also, this summer, we have a, a diving camp right now going on as well. One of the essentials of keeping kids interested in and avoiding summer burnout is student engagement and sparking student engagement. How do you go about uh, getting students enthusiastic about what they're doing and engaged in the summer camps? Variety. We offer, the, we offer all the campers a variety and giving kids what they want, what they want to do instead of having something structured for them. And uh, we also provide uh, interactive, healthy opportunities for the kids to be engaged. Thank you, Sally. And when we come back, we're going to talk with an important member of the camp staff. Welcome back. We're here with Joey Spano, Sally Unrath, and Tom DeGrand, who is the lead teacher in the summer day camps. Tom, you are a popular teacher at Scotch Elementary School, and you have a background in camps, and that probably helps you relate to kids outside of the classroom. Yeah, so when I was at Michigan State, I, I worked a lot of daycares and summer camps, and so I got a lot of experience with uh, many different ages of kids and just absolutely loved it. And then uh, when I got hired here in West Bloomfield, I started right away in a, what was called the ASAP program back then. It was then turned to Summer Scholars, which basically it's a summer, summer math and reading program. 
and I did that for about eight years. And then last year I was lucky enough to uh, get this lead teacher role um, in this program and, and absolutely love it and I'm happy to be back for the second year. Yeah, it sounds like we're fortunate that you have a wealth of experience. There are three types of summer camps that I understand. What's the difference between the three camps that we have? The three camps we have are Summer Sun and Fun, which is for ages three through five. And then we have our Camp Superstar, which is for campers going into grades uh, first through fourth. And then our Get Real Camp is for uh, those students going into fifth through eighth grade. So what does a typical day at camp look like if I'm from a student perspective? Yeah, so typically they come in around nine and then we uh, bring them down and they, you know, do the morning routine and whatnot. And we go, uh, we have three optionals in the morning uh, where they will have, give them choices of where they could go to. Uh, basically, we try to mix in an academic optional. Uh, so we might do some form of writing or just like the other day we did poetry where they got on the computer and wrote. Uh, we do math tournaments, like math, these uh, like fact practice tournaments. Uh, and so we try to get an academic in, and then uh, we try to get a physical fitness type of activity in, dodgeball, kickball, something like that, uh, to get them up and moving. And then we have an arts and crafts normally, and then, uh, and then we I like to bring in some science. I'm a science teacher at, at Scotch Elementary, so I try to bring in some of the science experiments that we've done throughout the, the years uh, that I know that the kids would enjoy. Um, and then, you know, we work a snack in there and then we go to lunch and in the afternoon we have, um, we might have a quick recess right before we go down to the pool and uh, then we swim for the rest of the afternoon. So Tom, what are some typical responses that you get from parents whose children are participating in the summer camps? Yeah, I mean, I hear parents say that their kids love it, that, uh, you know, when they're picking them up, I might talk to them brief briefly and they might say, you know, their kid's so excited to come back the next day or uh, like this was the, we're in our first week right now and we're already hearing that some parents that had signed up for the first week have already started to enroll their kids in the second week. So I think that's a good sign. But yeah, just, you know, parents say that they're, they're excited to come back and ready for the whole summer. And, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it sounds like you get a lot of that positive feedback that we're looking for. To keep it interesting, I understand that you have different themes for uh, the weeks. Uh, what are some of those themes, uh, weekly themes that you th you use? Yeah, and we have uh, like we have a technology week, so we'll make sure that the kids are doing some form of technology, whether it's computer uh, related or uh, we've had like a Wii, uh, like bowling tournament type of thing. Um, we have a uh, during the Fourth of July week. It's uh, the All American Sports Week where we have a field day. Uh, the kids love that last year and we have certificates and things that the kids get at the end of the week. Um, and then we have uh, a wet and wild week where we do like water balloon, well it starts off as a water balloon toss and then we kind of make it turn into a water balloon fight so it's kind of <laughs> fun. Um, and uh, we also during that week we go to the Waterford Oaks uh, water park as well. So that's just a few of them. Sounds like you have some pretty wild themes going on. Yeah. Uh, so what kind of activities do you plan? I see that there's a crazy critter week coming up. Yeah, during that week we go to the Detroit Zoo uh, and we also have a, it's like a petting zoo, essentially at, at Roosevelt we go there and the kids are able to uh, pet some different animals that they bring in. And uh, also Oakland County Parks and Recreation, they come in with this Go Fish program um, that the kids really seem to really enjoy last last year. So well, that's just a few of the things that we do during that week. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you're a science teacher and there looks like there's a theme called silly science or an activity called silly science. What's what's that all about? Yeah, so again, uh, being a science teacher, I try to bring in a, a science experiment each day, something I know the kids are gonna enjoy. Uh, one particular science experiment that we do, I know in fifth grade we talk about air pressure. And so one of the things that we do is uh, we bring a bottle in and we get a hard boiled egg and we uh, safely outside uh, have a match and we light it and we put it in. Of course this is something that I'm doing and they're observing. And I put it in and then we put the hard boiled egg on top and the egg gets sucked down in and we talk about all the reasons behind it and how air pressure had to do with it and whatnot. Uh, so that's one of, the, one of the experiments. We try to do uh, some, one each day. Um, and, uh, and then at the end of the week we have a company called in called Mad Science. 
and uh, they do different interactive science experiments with the kids that they just they really enjoy so yeah so this is where the field trips coincide with the weekly themes yeah so we try to have a an on-site or off-site field trip that will connect with the theme for that week yeah so Joey what's the attendance rate at these camps I'm glad that you asked that because uh, you, you hear this uh, thanks to Sally's uh, really hard work and creativity and uh, the popularity of Tom DeGrand uh, our attendance has really soared last year numbers greatly increased and they're up again this year uh, again, the different offerings and the, the things that we're able to bring forth to the camp in a wonderful environment. Uh, we have a great facility, West Bloomfield High School. We have a uh, highly motivated and caring staff, a safe environment, and uh, we mix in a lot of learning and a whole lot of fun. Speaking of learning, um, I also understand that you are in charge of our academic summer school. What kinds of opportunities do students have through academic summer school? Well, the academic summer school is for high school students uh, in the different uh, subject areas, math, science, English, uh, language arts, uh, health, and physical education. In a five-week program, students are able to earn uh, a full credit. And um, kid, most of the students are there for uh, credit recovery, some to improve upon a grade. And then we have a lot of incoming freshmen that uh, want to take phys ed and uh, health in the summer. So uh, very proud of that program. We uh, generally experience about a 100% success rate, meaning uh, all kids earn credit and there are no failures. So we have a very supportive staff, a lot of individual attention, and we really set the students up for success. I understand that uh, the football coach may drop in from time to time as well during that. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Coach Bellamy uh, does a great job. Uh, we have several football players, several of his players there in the summer, and uh, we make sure all students stay on task, and then he makes sure that his stu uh, students and players stay on task. So they need to earn credit, and um, we've had uh, just, a, just real good summers with them, actually. So I'd like to thank Joey, Sally, and Tom for joining me today as we have taken a closer look at summer camp programs in the West Bloomfield School District and how our kids have the opportunity to stay healthy and involved throughout the summer.